I'm Aaron Oliver. I'm Lindsay Shane, and we're Rowdy Folk. This is the Paper Lantern Lounge. Uh, a friend of mine on Tumblr said there was this guy whose music I should listen to, and so I did, and I really liked it. And then I was making snarky comments about hipsters on my Tumblr, and he chimed in about how they steal all the things we love, like flannel and acoustic instruments and PBR. I don't like PBR. And so we made a plan to get together and play some music, and that was all it was going to be. But that wasn't all it was. It was just kind of the first time we were together. We've been together ever since. Shane, we're Rowdy Folk, and this is the Paper Lantern Lounge. This is uh, all the songs we're playing tonight are original songs that we've written, and this one's called Gotta Get Away. Bob Dylan, Ryan Adams, uh, Shovel and Rope, uh, Brown Bird, Johnny Cash, uh, real like Ryan Bingham. Anybody else you can think of? Well, for me, the same plus Flat and Scruggs and mm -hmm. the Ava Brothers. And uh, I grew up listening to a lot of bluegrass. It's my uh, my papa was a bluegrass guitarist, and my parents were super into music, so I grew up thinking it was totally normal to sing like 
you know, the band instead of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, the band, definitely the band. The band. <laughs> I started playing guitar uh, my senior year of high school. So my senior year, my junior year, and just kept with it. Uh, played a lot of different things. Uh, from playing in churches, to playing on street corners, to playing in bars. Your dad got you started. Rooms. Yeah, dad got me started when I expressed interest in playing guitar. He loaned me his guitar and he showed me a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord, and said, the rest is up to you. And that was it. I didn't have any other help than that. I had to go get chord books or look it up online or figure it out by ear. He just made, threw me in the water and said, do it. I, uh, I started playing the piano when I was five. Uh, my parents uh, paid for lessons and I took lessons for a few years, but I didn't take much after that because my mom and my grandma both played. And I never played strings. In fact, he likes to give me grief because I don't know a single chord on the guitar. Um, I picked up the banjo three years ago and it has been the most fun I've ever had playing music by far. So that's pretty much my, oh, and I played saxophone for a while in a jazz band when I was younger, so. This is a song called How It Started.
us at night and whispers everything is gonna be all right at least for a couple of days and days turn to weeks and weeks into months and I tell you man can't get enough now I thank God for Interstate 35 and her sky blue Austin eyes Thank you. Rowdy Fault? <laughs> no, seriously, we had another band name for a while, and we found out that about a million people had the same band name. Don't say what it is. No, no don't we're not say, gonna it. say it. Go ahead. Uh, but we were like looking on, online for like domain names and stuff, and we were like, man, this is taken everywhere. And it's not just like musicians. It was like uh, underground art venues and like clubs and stuff, and we were just like, we can't do this anymore. We have to come up with something else. And one of your friends was describing what our sound was to one of her friends, and she said, well, it's, it's like rowdy folk. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, okay, there that's you it. There And uh, so we, we said that's the, that's the sound, and that's also the name. Yeah. And it's hard, too, because what really what we do is Americana. But, you know, for a lot of people, you say Americana and they say, what's that? And then you start trying to describe it. And well, it's kind of like alt country. That's kind of alt country. Well, and it's kind of got roots aspect and it's got folk and it's got all these things in it. And so it's really hard to sum up. And we hope that between rowdy folk and then saying all the time that we make homemade Americana, that it'll be people will be able to get what we're going for. Hopefully. If not, they'll just listen and. I don't mind not fitting in a genre. I think a lot of the best music right now doesn't fit in a genre. So this song is called Exercises in Futility. And Aaron said I should tell you guys what this is. Everywhere that we play, in all the states that we've played in, we have this little Thomas figurine. Any parents in here will recognize this. These are diesels. And it's because when Alex, our son, was three, the first time we ever played together, he sent this with me for good luck. So it goes everywhere we go. And we don't play without it. You ready? Right. I looked down to the gray every morning and I heard a sparrow calling out a warning. At least that's what it sounded like from here. She said the man on the moon's already been walked on the wild, wild west has already been won. I'm not sure what is left for us, my dear. And I don't know if that means Nothing or it all means something or if I'm just slow But every other weekend is a wedding or a funeral A new little baby born in the cold And I need more time I need more time Just a little more time Sometimes I wish I was an oak tree They live a long time and don't seem to worry much about futility Already. 
pocket I took a middle picture and I placed it in a locket To wear around my neck for the rest of my nights and the rest of my days Today, my favorite one to play was the one we played on the piano called Exercises in Futility, the faster, short one, and it's only because it's our newest and we've, um, we haven't been playing it live, so this was a road test for it really, and, and it was exciting to also because it's different from what we usually write and play. So for me, that was the most fun today, but it's really hard songs to answer. Like, songs like Josh Ritter and the Avid Brothers had a baby. That song was hardcore inspired by Josh Ritter and To the Dogs or Whoever. Um, and riffing off of that song. And, and the lyrics were inspired by the fact that we've been having this ongoing conversation. You know, we're not, on the one hand, you know, we kind of wonder if we're doing what we're doing, if it's, if it's completely is an exercise in futility for two reasons. One, you know, we're not 18. I mean, it's not like we're 90, but we're not 18. And so we're trying to, to start this band, you know, now and and also because everything's already been done and and we look around at these people who are making amazing music and we th and sometimes it's hard to think you know why why are we getting out here and doing this there's already a ton of people doing it and and everything's been done and that's where that song came from was trying to deal with the fact that everything's already been done and there's nothing really that you can do about it you either just have to go on and do your thing or not so we're doing our thing so we're doing our thing the gear back to the truck before we fell into another dirty motel bed I don't know what town I'm gonna wake up in half the time half the folks I know don't get it and the other half they think we've lost are the broke days these are the best worst times called my family back in Texas said I love you I hope to see you real soon tucked our boy into bed said we love you we'll be back later Cause we've got work to do I didn't know that I could bruise my heel through my boot from stomping Lost my voice three songs ago People still clapping, they ain't stopping I think they've lost their Are the blues beneath the smile These are the hard nights These are the broke days These are the best worst times Jar to cover our tap tonight. I sure hope when you close your eyes, my darling, you know it's all gonna be alright. This is the sadness before the
the sellout. These are the blues beneath the smile. These are the hard nights. These are the broke days. These are the best worst times. have two completely different styles of writing. Mm -hmm. uh, with me, I uh, I'll usually come up with like a line or something, one line, and then I retreat with a guitar and sometimes a harmonica and some paper or a computer or something, and I will just go into hermit mode until I, you know, hash out the song. She'll come up to me like, after a little bit of time and be like, hey, I wrote a song. I'm like, when? Because she wrote it all in her head and she hasn't even written it down on paper yet. And she's got the piano and the lyrics and everything. And I'm just like, I've been working for two weeks on this song and you just did it. It's kind of incredible. What? Go ahead. Oh, you go. One of the things is that we write we write together, but we don't write from scratch together. One of us usually comes to the other one with at least, if not an entire song, um, the, the backbone of a song. There are only a couple of songs that we've really written together, and even those, one person usually has a heavier hand mm -hmm. in it than the other. But one of the things that's really cool is, and I think, I know we both feel this because we've talked about it, is that the song gets 10 times better once we take it to the other person. Um, inevitably, inevitably, mm -hmm. like whatever they bring to it and change it. And they're, they're, we're really fluid with them. So we come to each other with a song and it may be a whole song, but we don't think of it as finished until, um, until it is. And, and I don't know, some of them feel never finished, but, but definitely the other person has a huge influence once the, the backbone of the song is down. And we'll, we'll argue and we'll, <laughs> we will argue, we'll argue and we'll also, I mean, we don't, we don't shy away from telling each other what we think about any of the stuff that we do. Been out here in Kentucky for a week, maybe two. Heard a mountain lion call out, saw the ghost train roll through. The Joe Pye is high, and that means autumn is nigh. And I'm still trying to outrun the ghost chase. Now that I'm 
dingy club. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. With, with crowds of people who listen. And I don't, I mean, they don't even have to be adoring, just listening. You know, when people, when you can tell when somebody's tapping their foot or nodding at a lyric or smiling at something you said, or like, ah, oh, like those moments. And I, I said earlier that my answer remains true, that watching him is the best part. But the other thing that I love is seeing that when I see somebody in the audience connect with something that we're doing, like a little thing, especially that's, that's killer for me. I love that. And that doesn't happen. Uh, we played one place that was kind of cavernous, the place in McAllister, and we couldn't see anybody, and it, yeah. it wasn't the same at all. So, for me, I like I love playing the songs that we've written to let to show people that you know our passion, our our art, uh, and when when the songs go over well, it is really really nice, especially when it's one that you've written. This is going to sound super dorky and people are going to roll their eyes and hate me for saying it, but really my favorite thing about playing live is watching him play live. Truthfully. That's why I stare at him all the time no, and everybody I, makes fun of me for no, it. I sound shallow. No. <laughs> it's true though. That's why I always, I always stare at him and yeah, it really is the best part. She loves me She tells me all the time Oh my baby She loves me She tells me all the time Well she brings me Water then asks the wine Yeah she brings me Water then asks the wine oh, my baby Like it is. It's my baby shoot straight. She tells me like it is. And I hang on every word that old woman says. Yes, I hang on every word my woman says. Well, oh, my baby, don't take her up. No kind of man. My baby, don't take drugs No kind of man, no She's got a knife on her hips so in her hand She wears a knife on her hips so in her hand My baby, she loves me Baby, she loves me but she tells me like it is And I hang on every word my woman says Yes, I hang on every word my woman says Oh, I said, my sweet baby It's like a ride on a train Yes, I said, my sweet baby, now like a ride on a train And the way that she moves Making you insane It's the way that she moves Making a man You can find our music at the printer where our EP is being printed. <laughs> um, we just finished recording an EP uh, with at a studio in Odessa, Texas, um, Bruce Beard with Beard Music Group. And um, it's finished and mastered and we just have to get it printed and start selling it. 
Um, and as far as other than that, we post all of our events on and our gigs on Facebook. So the best way to hear our music is to come here at live. And before too long at our live events, we'll be selling our CDs and T-shirts and hopefully vinyl eventually because we're, we're big believers in vinyl. And then our hope is that with the money that the limited money we hope to make with the EP and the t-shirts and such, we'll be able to combine that with a Kickstarter and record a full-length album in 2014.